Hello and welcome to the first video in the Chem 1 modules. We're going to look at atomic structure in this. So this module covers um, the basic components of an atom, mass spec and the electronic configuration. So a bit more advanced than the GCSE version. So we'll start off with the simplest bit. So what's actually in the atom? So you should be aware of this from GCSE hopefully. Protons, neutrons and electrons. And you need to be aware of the properties of these. So their actual mass and charge, well, the relative mass, relative charge. So a little table like that, more or less all you need to remember. Um, the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, so they're in the center of the atom whereas the electrons round the outside in the orbitals. So they don't go around in a nice um, spherical sort of solar system style um, orbit. They're moving around all crazy. We'll come into it with the actual orbitals in a second. Um, do not write zero mass for an electron. It does have mass. You need to learn the actual number. When it comes to the charges as well, do not just write positive and negative. You need to actually state plus one and negative one to show that the, the proton and the electron are sort of equal and opposite in terms of the charge. Right, next bit, actually being able to read the periodic table. So your periodic table will always be laid out like that. You'll have your element here. You will have your atomic number at the bottom. That is your proton number. Well, in the bottom of most of them. And your atomic mass up the top. If you're standing on your head, you live in Australia or whatever, and they are flipped, you are always looking for the smaller number. That is the proton number. So to read this, if you want to know how many protons in the element, smaller number. If you want to know how many neutrons, then it's atomic mass take away atomic number. Because the atomic mass tells you the amount of protons and neutrons combined. So for an example, if I say something like that, the bottom number tells me the number of protons, so three protons. If I want to work out the number of neutrons, top take away bottom, because it's saying of that seven, three of them are protons. So the other four must be neutrons. And to work out the electrons, well, in an element, the number of electrons will always equal the number of protons. Because the protons, it's like three plus one charges. The overall charge, as you can see there, is neutral. So we must have three negative one charges to cancel it out. Now, if you were looking at an ion, so... If I change it to that, your number of protons and neutrons in this are still the same. Still got three protons there. That will never change for the element. The proton defines it. I haven't changed the, the isotope there. So seven take away three gives me four neutrons. It's the amount of electrons which change. The electrons are the interesting stuff in chemistry. They are the ones which move about, do the reactions, etc. Now it's a positive charge, it's a bit counterintuitive for some. A positive charge means it's lost electrons, it's given away a negative charge. So starting with the three electrons which we've had initially, we've lost one. That single plus means plus one, plus one charge, so lost one negative. So three electrons initially, we've lost one, we are now down to two electrons. So when it's positive, you'll always have less electrons than protons. When it's a negative charge, you will always have more electrons than protons. Because negative charge means you've brought in more negative. So overall, that's what you've become. And I mentioned there about the isotopes. So there's the common examples used. 
chlorine 35, chlorine 37. So this is why in your periodic table there will be decimals for some of the numbers. The decimals are there because of the average taken of these. So chlorine 35.5 in your periodic table should be telling you that it's not an equal amount of those. If there was a 50-50 split of them, your average would be 36. But there's not. 35.5 tells you more of these. Those good with maths can probably spot the 3 to 1 ratio. So the only difference with an isotope is the amount of neutrons. The amount of protons are the same, the amount of electrons are the same. So chemically, these two are exactly the same. Chemical properties are determined by the electrons. As I said, they go out and do the reacting stuff. So if these are exactly the same in electrons, they will react exactly the same. The only difference is the mass, because the number of neutrons are different. So this one is a bit chubbier and heavier than this one. Okay, next bit to go on to, we will talk about mass spectrometry. So the mass spec is a very useful piece of um, analytical equipment. You'll come on to look at it more and more with reading the graphs in it and further modules. For now, you more or less just need to be aware of the actual stages and be able to do some simple calculations based on it. So the five stages. Viad, like that. Remember, any mnemonic you wish. Vicky is a dirty dyke. All sorts come up with it. Vaporization, ionization, acceleration, deflection, detection. So I'll attempt to draw an actual picture of it. Not very good with art. Okay, so first off, what would happen would be the vaporization. So things are vaporized by a hot filament. You need to turn them into the gaseous state. They need to be in the gaseous state in order to be ionized. The definition of ionization is the minimum energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in the gaseous state. So we need to vaporize it first. So you just heat it up, turn it into a gas, because then you can hit all of the individual either atoms or molecules or compound whatever you're putting through there rather than it being in a solid block next stage the ionization so this is using an electron gun yes it's simply called that and what it does is it bombards a beam of high energy electrons at your sample now these electrons what they will do is they will come flying in the electrons which are in the outer shell of your, as I said, whatever you're actually putting through, atom, molecule, etc. They would come so close that the repulsion would be extremely high and they basically they would smack each other off into open air space. And with that, you've actually turned your species into a single positively charged ion. They try to get the energy just right to make it a single positive rather than multiple positive. So we vaporized it, we ionized it. The next stage is acceleration. So they all get the same kinetic energy. Now you accelerate it with an electric field. So there is a reason why they are done in this order. You've got to vaporize it so it's in the gaseous state to be ionized. You've got to ionize it here because if it didn't have a charge, it wouldn't be accelerated by the electric field. And also the next stage, deflection. So the deflection occurs here where you've got a magnet around it. There is a magnetic field. The species are deflected according to a mass to charge ratio. And say it written as that, M over Z, mass to charge. So again, they need an actual charge to be deflected by this magnet. So that's why we need to ionize it first. They need a positive charge as well, otherwise they would not get past the acceleration. Um, if it's got a negative charge, the first plate in there is negatively charged, it would just knock it back out. So it needs to be positively charged. 
Um, with the deflection, with them being deflected according to the mass to charge ratio, you can tamper with it a bit. Usually they'll do a full scan where they'll start off with a very weak magnetic field and then they'll tune it through to a high strength magnetic field. Um, just so they can get sort of a full curvature actually coming round and hitting the detector here. So that's what they alter in a mass spec. Um, can't imagine if it's just a little dial or if they just press the numbers up and down, but the machine will do it automatically. The final stage is the detection. So the, det the detector over here. Now your positively charged ions will come down and hit the detector. On the detector there are some electrons. When a positive ion comes next to an electron, it will pick up the electron. What the detector notices is those electrons moving. When electrons move, that is a current. So the detector will notice a current at a certain point. And that's how it will be able to give you a reading that something is hitting there for the mass to charge. If there is a bigger current, then obviously there is a bigger percentage um, abundance of that particular mass over charge ratio. So that's the mass spec in five stages. A um, couple of questions which sort of people always get confused about with them. Can you imagine these two? So I've got a, a single nitrogen atom here, positively charged. I've got the nitrogen molecule there. We'll assume they're both N14 isotopes. Two plus charge overall. Can a mass spec tell the difference between them? Well, no. Mass to charge, that's going to be 14 over 1. Mass to charge, that's going to be 28 over 2. Which is the same as 14 over 1. Um, other bit where you'll have to do with the mass spec is the actual calculation. So you may either be given numbers or given an actual um, spectra readout and actually asked to interpret it from that. I'm going to end up going off the page there. So this would just repeat. So if you were wanting to work out the average mass, so the relative atomic mass of a sample of an element which contains isotopes, so the chlorine for example, then what you would look for is the mass of each isotope times its percentage abundance and then you would divide, all, so you do it for however many isotopes you've got and then divide by your total abundance. Now your total abundance will not always be 100. It's a key thing to stress. People always think my numbers add up to, don't add up to 100. They're above it, below it, and they start freaking out. Who cares? They can alter the scale on those mass spectra readings to be either above, below, whatever. So it's just this plus whatever other abundances you've got added together, that goes on the bottom. So the chlorine one looks something like this. So that's how it's actually worked out. You should be competent with maths in terms of being able to rearrange equations if you're actually doing a chemistry A level. You can at times be told this. So they will give phrase it sort of uh, a sample containing multiple isotopes has a relative atomic mass of, and they will give you a number. They will give you some information about one of the other isotopes. So it has a mass of 35, a percentage of 75. They will tell you the percentage abundance of the other and ask you to work out the atomic mass of the other isotope. Same equation, just rearrange it. Times the 100 to bring it across. Work this out. Subtract it to the other side. And then just divide by the 25 here and that would work out your unknown.
fairly straightforward. Should be good with maths. Okay, um, final little bit, the electronic configuration. So we'll talk about these. Um, GCSE, you may have been told 2882 or 2818, whatever they're, they're saying to you. It's a simplification. Um, at A-level, you're going to sort of bring in the orbitals with it. Um, I can't really draw a sphere. You, the different orbitals you will have that you will see the S, the P, the D, the S orbitals look like a sphere, football shape. The P orbitals are a dumbbell on each of the three axes in space. And the D orbitals, Google them, I cannot draw that. Um, you've got all sorts of dumbbells with donuts around them, etc. Now, every orbital can hold two electrons. There is one S orbital, so the S's can only hold two. There are three P orbitals, like I said, the three axes in space. So the P subshell can hold six electrons in total. That's obviously three orbitals, two electrons each, three times two, six. There are five D orbitals. So the D subshell can hold in total 10 electrons, five times two, 10. Now for how they actually fill up, I would recommend being able to draw this. It will assist you until you've actually got the gist of remembering it. Okay, so putting them down like that, you'll notice the big number here is the energy level. The, the letter tells you the subshell. And then what I will do is I'll put the little numbers um, superscripted. So 10. That tells you how many electrons that that subshell can hold in total. So you don't have to fill it, but in total. So for the order of actually filling these up, get a pencil, run it diagonally across them. So 1s first, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, then 4s. So that's a mistake people always make. You fill up 4s before you fill up 3d. Key thing there. And then so on, 3d, 4p, and it would be 5s across here, um, but you'll not really go that far in the AS. So if I write this out, um, if I pick an example, magnesium. So magnesium, look in your periodic table, how many electrons does it have? 12. So to start filling it up, well I fill up 1s first. So 1s2. Then I will move into 2s. It can hold two electrons. I've still got 10 left to use, so I'll put two in there. Next, I move on to the 2p. So I've used up four. I've still got eight electrons to go, so that this can take six, so I'll put six in there. And finally, I've got two remaining. The 3s can hold both of those, so I will put my electrons in there. So there is writing magnesium in the SPD format. You need to be able to do that. Um, I'll bring in the box diagrams just because it will help you with the ionization energy. So nitrogen has seven electrons. Now the box diagram is very simple. If you can do that SPD, you can do these. Every orbital is represented by a box. Simple. So if you want, just imagine above it. There's the 1s. S has one orbital, one box. Move on to 2s. S again, one box. P. P has three orbitals. Px, Py, Pz. So three boxes. Okay, nitrogen has seven electrons. Now to start filling them up. You always start filling from the lowest energy first. So 1s is the lowest, 2s next, 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 so forth like that. You fill them up until it's full. 
make sense. So two electrons there.